Hello everyone, uh, welcome to join the video again. And uh, this is um, video number four, okay, on logarithm. Okay, so this is a new chapter. Please uh, make sure you've downloaded um, the handout from your email box and you have printed out because we really need that with you while you are watching the videos. And I want you to engage by working on the questions and do a little bit copying and some of your own work uh, during the videos, okay? You might need to pause the videos from time to time, remember that. If you are not very sure about what I'm talking about, then you can rev reverse a little bit and rewatch some of the important things that you don't understand. Okay, before we start, I would like to have a little bit revisions about the logarithm. What, what do we mean by logarithm, okay? So, we've learned the natural exponential function. So this is the natural exponential function. Natural exponential function. Okay. And we've introduced that before. And there's a partner for this function, which is the what we call the inverse function of that natural exponential function, which is the natural logarithm function, which is in the form of ln. Okay. So just just. Uh, 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 a little reminder that ln is another way to write the logarithm of base e. So we know the general expression of logarithms log. So that means that logarithm is equivalent to log with base e. But because that happens so frequently in math, so we just use a simpler symbol by using ln. So it's just another form of logarithm. Okay. So why do we need to learn that logarithm? Um, if you remember in unit three, there's a chapter about the exponential growth and decay. And sometimes we need to uh, go backward. Okay. Uh, do the reverse of the of solving the exponential function. For example, if we are asked to solve like uh, e to power x equals three. So how can we solve this one? Okay, so we understand that you can use the logarithm. You can just do it like x equals logarithm three. So this is because the logarithm uh, is the inverse function of the exponential function. That means if you have a function like y equals e to the power x, then the logarithm form of the such thing is if you take logarithm with y, then it becomes x. So that's why you can use this thing to solve it. And in the calculator, you have that particular function of log 3. and the answer would just be 1.986, okay. And you can track that with your calculator as well. So that's how it is. Okay, so let's go back to the differentiation of logarithm. Okay, so you see the statement is if there's a function called fx equals logarithm x, then so f dash, that means the derivative of such a function is 1 over x. So it's not very difficult to, uh, to, see the, to see the pattern of the function. But why? Okay, 
So I will try to explain why, but before I'm going to do that, I'm going to transform that into the um, differentiation operator. So our statement is, if you have fx equals logarithm x, then the derivative of such a function is 1 over x. OK, and the domain of this function is, of course, x must be greater than 0. So that's the domain, OK, because for all the logarithm, x can't be less than or equal to 0. OK, so in terms of differentiation operator, I'm going to write d log x over dx. So that's basically the differentiation operator. Then you will see 1 over x. OK, you might want to know why. OK, so I'm going to give you some kind of explanation why. OK, so still remember uh, last time we learned um, the differentiation of exponential function e to the power x is just e to the power x itself, right? So I'm going to use that fact again. So let's say if you have um, y equals log x, okay, so in exponential form, just like what we see here, if you have y equals e to the power x, then the equivalent form is log y equals x. So equivalently, you can go back. If you have logarithm x equals y, then in the exponential form, it would be e to the power y equals x, right? All right. So then how can we try to find the dy over dx? OK, we try to do it. The, we differentiate both sides with respect to x, OK? Then you will see, OK, on, on the right-hand side, so obviously 1. On the left-hand side, I will try to use chain rule. OK, so that's a chain rule I'm going to do. OK, can you see that? OK, because you have to match that power with the same variable in the differentiation operator, OK? So that means the first part is just EY again, OK? And the second part is EY over dx equals 1. Then wait a minute. What do we mean by EY? So still remember that? EY is just equals x. So I'm going to write that down as x over here. And what do we mean by dy over x? dy over x, y is just log x. So I'm going to write this here. OK, then I'm going to transfer that x to the right hand side. Then you will see the whole thing. OK, so 1 over x. So that's why differentiation of log x equals 1 over x. So that explains this rule. OK? Right, so that's the statement. So um, in the coming chapter, it's all about, uh, I mean, the common two videos, it's all about differentiation of logarithm x equals 1 over x. So, you, so that's why I spend some time um, explaining that to you. OK, I hope you have a deeper understanding. All right, so let's go back to the exercise here. OK, so if we know the differentiation of logarithm x equals 1 over x, how can we differentiate? Oh, let me save another function, because, uh, another version. OK, sorry. Um, I should answer. That's for my presentation only. OK. All right. Um, so you need to differentiate. That means you need to find the derivative. OK. 
let's say I'm going to differentiate okay and then you see that's free that's free is just a constant okay by the rule of differentiation I can move that 3 to the front and still multiplying the, the whole derivative of log x okay so what do we mean by differentiate of log x over dx so we understand that's just 3 times 1 over x okay 3 times 1 over x you would like to write that's 3 over x is that all good? <clears throat> all right. Okay. For the second part, you see that some products of two things. So this is a product. So that's that's one bracket times another. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to use product rule. Okay. So what's the product rule? Still remember? First of all you need to identify your u, which is log x plus 1, and your v, which is 3 minus log x. So because we've just learned um, the differentiation of log, so I'm going to do it separately. I'm going to try to do it du dx. OK, I'm going to do that d log x over dx plus d1 over dx. Okay, and of course, that's d log from x over dx is 1 over x, and that's plus 0. Okay, 1 is 0 because, uh, sorry, the derivative of a constant is always 0, right? Okay, so let me write the answer just 1 over x. How about v? dv over dx. Okay, so I will give you some time to get your answer right here. So let me give you, I think, 10 seconds would be okay. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So the answer would just be 1 minus 1 over x, if you've got it. OK. And OK, so that's the, the differentiation of two parts. But how can we do that? We know when you try to differentiate the fx, I'm going to do d times u times v, du times v, right? Because that's u, that's my v. And according to the product rule, it's like this. Still remember that? OK, so that's the product rule. So this is the product rule. So that means you, you have to separate, uh, differentiate them separately with the other one um, next to it to multiply the derivative for each part. OK, so I'm going to create a little bit more space here. OK, u is just log x plus 1 times, that's 1 over x. OK, v is 3 minus log x times minus 1 over x. OK, so obviously you can see both are having 1 over x. OK, so if I put that 1 over x out, then I'm going to have log x plus 1 minus 3 minus log x. Okay, so sorry about the space. Okay, so that becomes log x plus 1. I remove the brackets, then I have to change the sign. And you will see that that's log x plus log x. That's 2 times log x and plus 1 minus 3 and that's minus 2 and that's it and okay so I hope you get this one okay let's go back to see the PowerPoint yeah so the answer hmm? something wrong with my answer okay let me see Oh, 
I see a mistake here, sorry. So that's the problem um, uh, sometimes here because that's minus. Okay, sorry for this. I'm going to make some correction here. So that's plus. So here's minus, here's plus. So here's minus, here's minus, here's plus. And that's minus, sorry for, for, for the confusion. Okay. And so uh, later on, this one become minus two log x because the minus log x minus another log x. And okay, that's minus one plus three. So that's plus two. Okay, I hope you've got it. Okay. It's just because I, I, I didn't see that dv over dx actually equals one um, minus one over x. So that's the wrong substitution on my part. Sorry for this. Okay, so then we're going to see the chain rule. Going to see the chain rule for log, but then you have um, function inside. Okay, so the problem here is okay, not all the time you will see just as simple as log x, sometimes they have different stuff inside that logarithm function. Okay, and I, I, I give you a list of things for you to decide which of following is are correct. Okay, so how about the first one? So you need to check what? The variable inside the logarithm and the variable for the differentiation operator, are they the same? If they are the same, they should give one over x. Okay, yeah, so that's true, right? How about the second one? Okay, that's logarithm u and that's u and that's u again. So it's basically, are they the same? If you can see that's x and u, they are just different symbols but having the same pattern and so, and you can call X and U, they are dummy. It's not important the letters, what their letters are. It's more important you can see the template or the pattern. Okay, so actually they are, um, they are good. Okay, so, and how about this one? No, because it shouldn't be E to the power X. I think I made some mistake here. That's not what I, what I intended to do. What I want to do is actually I try to get you to do one over x, but then I, I make a mistake. Okay, so please change that to one over x, one over t, please change that. And after you've changed them, try to think, are they true? Okay, so if that's x, that's t, mm. and this is x. Are they good? Okay, so they um, they don't match. Okay, they don't match, do they? They don't match. Okay, so if x here, but your variables t, they don't match. So you can't say, uh, okay, you can't apply that rule for uh, differentiation law x. So this is wrong. Okay, and how about that one? That's t, that's x, and that's t. t, x, t. Okay. So, what's your decision? No, they don't match, again. Okay, so let's see. Mm, okay, for, for the following few cases, you see the problem here is they have uh, more complicated stuff within that logarithm function. You have more complicated structure. Okay, so what do you think if I'm going to differentiate log bracket to x but my my variable is just x. Is that okay? I'm just 
right. I'm going to just write one over x. Is that okay? What do you think? Okay, remember the rule is the correct way to use the rule is like this one and that one. All things must match. Okay, so that means if you have two x here and you want to differentiate, there's no such rule unless you have two x underneath as well. Okay, so you have to follow that rule strictly. You can't say, oh, they both have an x, they both contain x, that's not good enough. You must have the same stuff, exactly the same, not similar. It must be exactly the same. And, okay, so how about here, the second case? You see that's 2x, and here is 2x again. Is that okay? Yes, because they're all 2x, then it's okay. I hope I've... Uh, get the idea course to you. Okay, so how about the next two cases? Uh, so I am going to give you um, um, one minute to make up your mind. You, you can go back to see all the questions here and try to figure out. I'm going to change modify the PowerPoint before I forgot. Okay, so I give you one minute to think about these two questions. Well, I'm going back to, oh, I can't do it because otherwise you will see the answer. Right, anyway, I'm going to pause the video for one minute. Okay, I hope you've um, got your answers. Okay, uh, for the first part, um, this is t, and you want to have 1 over 5t. Is that okay? No, because um, they're not exactly the same. How about the second case, 5t minus 2, 5t minus 2, 5t minus 2, they all match. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, I hope you, you've got the idea. You must have everything match before you can apply that rule. Um, all right. So then we move on to example 2, in which you will see uh, these sorts of things. Within the logarithm, that's more a little bit more complex structure. Okay, and all this belongs to the structure. You have fx logarithm. Rather than x, you have another function inside, and this function could be 6x, could be 8x minus 3. Okay, so let's see how can we get the answers out of the first one. Okay, so I'm going to do it in chain rule, okay? So I'm going to do this one. So I prefer writing the differentiation operator first. Okay. Right. Can we do this? At the, uh, can we just apply the rule 1 over 6x? Well, 1 over x? No. But they, they don't match, do they? Okay. So that means you need to apply the chain rule. Okay, I, I will give you some time to think about what I'm going to put inside here. So that's the structure of chain rule. You basically you create that chain by inserting a difference d of something. Okay, d something in the bracket and something there. You insert that thing to make it chain rule like. But the problem is, what should I put into that bracket? Okay, so remember you can only apply the differentiation for the logarithm, I mean the rule um, for the logarithm differentiation when the variable are matched. Okay, so that means uh, the the function inside the logarithm is 6x, so you have to match that in the variable. That means the, the thing you put in underneath. So I'm going to put 6x there. Okay, so, and then you have to do the same thing here because that's what the chain rule asks you to do. So that's the chain rule. Okay, and after that, you see that's log 6 and the variable now becomes 6x lost 6x and the variable 6x. So that means when our, when our 
able to use that rule, 1 over 6x. It's not 1 over x, but 1 over 6x, because the variable now is 6x. And how about the next part? You still need to do a de derivative for that part, and that becomes 6, all right? Because that's, you know, 6x, you put 6 out. dx over dx is 1, OK? And you prefer to simplify that so that 6 can be canceled out. So it's just 1 over x. Is that OK? Good. OK. So I want you to take a little bit um, time um, to, to try this one. OK, I try to get you two minutes. You pause the video, spend two minutes on that one to see how far you can go. OK. OK, um, if you've spent two minutes, let's see if you've got the answer. All right. OK, I'm going to change my color as well. OK, so um, I'm going to do that one. So against 8x minus 3 versus x, OK, they're not compatible, so you can't use chain rule. Yeah, sorry, you can't use the rule for um, logarithm function at this stage, but you can change that into something, and you do the same thing here, which is the chain rule, and you fill in the same stuff right here. Then you will have 1 over 8x minus 3. And right here, OK, so you can do it slowly. You can try to do it, take 8 out, and then dx, and then you d3. And of course, then it becomes 8 only. OK. And a better way to write this is always like 8 over 8x minus 3. Is that OK? So I hope you've got your answer here. So that's the answer. OK? Good. So let's go to example 3. And OK, example 2, they are linear. 6x and 8x minus 3, those functions embedded in, in, in the logarithm, they are all linear. So how about when they are nonlinear? So x squared plus 3 is nonlinear e to the power x minus 1 is nonlinear as well. So how can we do the differentiation on these two um, structures? OK, and for the first one, we're going to use the same strategy. OK, try to do this one. OK, so you will see that, OK, x squared plus 3, OK, and here's x, so you can't match them. So you are going to rewrite that thing like this. And OK, so again, this is a chain rule. Can you see that? Sorry. And for the first part, as long as you have matched that x squared plus 3 with x squared plus 3 underneath in the variable parts, then you can use okay, that rule of differentiation. And how about the second part? And the second part, you know, um, you can differentiate that plus d3 over dx. Okay. And we all know that this is 0, and that will become 2x. OK, so in the end, you just write 2x over x squared plus 3. That's it. No problem at all. OK, have a look. OK, so it's basically the same stuff. But you might just need to do um, a bit more on those differentiation, which is like x squared. Here, you, you need to consider how can you differentiate EX. OK, so I will ask you to spend like three minutes on this one. You might need to use the differentiation of that's e to the power X. OK, try to think about this a little bit longer. OK, pause your video for three minutes. 
Okay, uh, I hope you've got some progress here. If you need more time, just okay, just pause the video and and um, try to get your solutions. It's much more important to get your own solutions than just watch for my working, okay? Because it's all about you learning from um, uh, from from this kind of um, knowledge rather than me showing you all the answers, okay? Right, so if you are going to do that, and I'm going to write the operator, then I'm going to try to use the chain rule. Of course, we've done it many times. Okay, what would be the um, thing that I put in here? So be e to power x minus one. You have to match the function inside the logarithm, and that's one over e to power x minus one times. Okay, for that bit, uh, the second one, one minus one, you don't need to worry about that. It becomes zero. But for the first one, dex over dx, which should be ex, all right? I might just emphasize that a little bit more because that's that's relative new thing. All right, so, and you see that's e, ex minus one, and that's the first part is ex, then second part is zero. And so that's just EX. Okay, so that EX over EX minus one. So that's the answer. So if you've got your answer, then I'm happy for you. All right, if you just have some start somewhere, you just need to spend more time to make sense of all the things before we move on, right? Oh, good. Okay, so differentiate the following functions. Okay, so these two things are a little bit different than the stuff we have here. The stuff we have here, you, you just change the contents uh, within the logarithm function. So that's a function within a logarithm function. But this is quite the difference. So you still have log x, log x but there's something different here. You see that's two over here, that's one over law x. So how can we do such things? We still need to use chain rule, but the chain rule, you, you need to be a little bit more creative, okay? Okay, so let me show you how to do it. Okay, so for example, for A, I'm going to try this one. Oh, sorry, I need to write the operator. Okay, of, um, obviously I can't do it because there's a square there. I can't just treat it like dx, uh, d log x over x. I can't do that. So I will try to use the chain rule, but what I'm going to use so I need to be, remember I said, you need to be more creative here. So I'm going to put inside here. Okay, so see, the structure is here, something square. Do we know how to differentiate something square? We've learned that because that's a power rule. Okay, for example, we understand. Um, okay, I might just write something here as a draft. You don't need to copy, okay? So D, if I have D, u square du then we know is to you so so i know how to deal with that square and so i sh we, i should be we, we should be able to deal with something with square as long as you match the base in your variable part in the operator okay okay so the same thing happened here. So I'm going to create that um, chain by writing log x. So it's quite, 
Okay, it's quite fascinating, isn't it? Okay, so if I put, oh sorry, that should be log x rather than log 2. Okay, so if I put log x there, so you see I match that log x square, I match the base of that square thing with the same stuff underneath. Okay, so that means what? That means I can just apply the power rule for my first part. So how can we differentiate something with square? Okay, so it just become 2 log rate from x to minus 1, right? So that's what we have for the differentiation of x squared. Okay, but right now, because I've matched that log x squared with log x underneath, so I'm able to do that as a power function. So it's more like a power function. Okay, times the logarithm x over x, so that part is quite easy, we, we, we know that. Okay, so let's tidy up the things. So log x to the power 2 minus 1, of course, is just power 1, and the whole thing is just like that, it's done. Okay, that's how it is. Okay, just try to make sense of it, don't, you don't need to... Uh, hurry up, spend some time to think about this, how it works, okay? If you are okay, we move on, okay? If you're not, you just stop the video and think about um, how it works because we are going to use pretty much the same technique for the second one. Okay, for the second one, it's fx 1 over equals 1 for log x. So here, how can we convert that uh, log x in the denominator, right? So if you think about the first one, so right now we, we, we are able to deal with the situation with log x with a power. Okay, uh, so let's rewrite that into logarithm x to the power minus one, is that okay? Yeah, so again, it's a power function, but the base is log x. Okay. So I will give you three minutes, try to figure out how can we differentiate this uh, log x to power minus one. Okay, you, with reference to part A, they are quite similar now. Okay, just spend some time. Okay, um, we're back. So log x to power minus one, so if you can apply the same method um, we use in part A, then you will be able to find the answer. Okay, so that's minus one, so you need to create a train. So, and that train should be log x, because log x is just the base of that power minus one. And so apply the power rule, you, you, you Differentiate something with power minus one as power, okay? And you have the same base in your variable part. That means you put that power to the front and you minus, you take away one from the power. So that's minus one, minus one. And the second part is always easier. And okay, so it becomes minus one. So you don't need to worry about that. Log x minus two, okay, so I'm going to write this one as minus two power over x. A even better version would be x times log x squared. Okay, because minus two as power means one over uh, square, right? Okay, so let's go back to C. If I have such thing in, yeah, so that's, that's a PowerPoint, so Right, this time is correct. Oh, good. And okay, so that that's pretty much for this video. And and if you are more in, you are interested, in, you might try to do some of the questions before the next videos. Okay, so it's a little bit mixed up of everything. All right, so you might try to spend like five to ten minutes. Try to. Um, have a quick review for what we've done so far, and you try to do a two question right here before the next next video. Okay.
then we see you next time.